Hello, everyone, and welcome to Six Figure Souls, Doing Good and Making Money. This is a special season five, highlighting our co-authors of our collaborative book project, The Ultimate Guide to Creating Your Soul-Aligned Business, 25 Practical Strategies from the Experts. I am your host, Camille Miller, founder of the Natural Life Business Partnership, pioneer of the soul professional movement, and lead author for this book. Today, we have with us Meryl Hayton. She is the co-author or full author of chapter 11, co-author of the book. And her chapter is called How to Shut Down Your Inner Critic, Learn How to Stop Self-Sabotage So You Have More Clients and Money. Hello, Meryl. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, great to be here. Thanks for having me. You are welcome. So I want to jump right in and talk about your chapter a little bit and what your experience was even writing the book. You're a first time author, right? This is the first time. This is the first, first time. time. So exciting. <laughs> How did you find the experience of, you know, writing your story? I felt like your story was very personalized, right? It, I mean, the whole book is everyone's stories, but your particular chapter was really about breaking through some of your limitations, your feeling of unworthiness. And uh, you use the word mo emotional clutter at one yeah. point that I, <laughs> that I loved. So <laughs> what was it like for you to kind of write out and share for the first time your story? Um, I mean, it was a great experience. I, I mean, I remember coming to you and asking for a little bit of help because I felt that I didn't really have that much to say. I mean, I have no problem writing content, marketing okay. my business, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, you kind of forget, I think, a lot about what happens, you know, in your journey, because as a, a business owner, you're like constantly thinking about the future, right? Like how to do the next step and how to, where am I, where am I going to market? You know, you're just like constantly forward thinking, I think. I feel about your goals. So it's almost like you forget all this kind of stuff that happened in the past. I'm not saying that's for everybody, but um, I think that's a lot about how I think is that I probably don't appreciate enough and have enough gratitude for what I have been through. So putting the story together is really um, a really good reminder, you know, for me. Yeah. Beautiful. And uh, just to let people know, our listeners that um, don't know you very well, you are a longtime now salon owner yep. for decades. Mm -hmm. And I know when you joined NLBP, you were taking that first leap into going out on your own and going in this new direction. And now you're a very successful EFT practitioner, mindset coach, um, you know, and have this full clientele. But what was, if you can dive in just a little bit, I know people will read your story in the book, but that that's a huge change, right? So what was that like? And I know there's always ups and downs. And I think that's important to point out for any entrepreneur listening to this, but regardless of what your background is, when you have a dream to do something else that's more aligned with your soul, and I know that you actually love doing nails too, um, but you went into this new part of your life. Mm -hmm. What was that journey a little bit like? And to give some type of uh, encouragement for those that are maybe still stuck in their old life and saying, I want to do this. Yeah, I don't right. really know how to move forward. And I know along the way, because we're friends, you had a lot of up and downs. It's not always easy for any no. of us. Me too, right? It's no. and that's any entrepreneur. I don't care what you do, if it's soul aligned or not, right? It's a lot easier, I think, when it's soul aligned um, when you actually do that inner work. But tell us a little bit about that journey for you. Yeah, I mean, um, I did start in corporate America, but I had this creative passion of mine, which was doing nails. And that's why I left corporate because yeah. I wanted to work for myself, make my own hours, have my own freedom and not be in that cubicle with no windows. <laughs> and, um, and I wanted to start later. I didn't want to work nine to five, you know? So I did that for almost 30 years mm -hmm. and, but I did get burnt out, you know, as I 
mentioned in, in my chapter. And that led me to become a yoga teacher. And then I slowly started to cut down in the salon and start to think about, you know, what is my next step? And I just felt that everything that I did in the salon was all about the outer beauty. And I was always thinking in my head about inner beauty and my own inner beauty. And that's what really led me. You know, I, I remember speaking to a few people that were life coaches and someone that trained people to become life coaches. Mm -hmm. And I called them and I was like, you know, I'm kind of thinking I want to do this. And they said, well, just make sure that you realize you're going to have to, you know, go, like, go find your clients, I think is the word they used or, you know, yeah. get your clients. And it's not like you have a brick and mortar where people will just see and come, and come to you. Um, and at first that was a little scary. I'll have to say, you know, that, that, that concept was a little scary. Um, but I have found that when you are soul aligned that, and you do believe and have trust and faith in what you're doing, it does come to you more easily, right? So we don't have to go get, you know, that is actually a very masculine mindset. And that's what I used to be in a lot more of. Yes, you need the masculine energy to take your action steps, you know, to move forward, but you need to have that feminine energy of allowing it to unfold as it should and, um, and allowing and receiving the clients and the money too. So there's that, um, balance that, um, you know, that you need to find, but, you know, to inspire other people who are thinking about doing that, um, you just have to keep listening to your intuition, no matter what is going on. You have to tune out the naysayers and trust me, there'll be plenty. I had, you know, I had people that told me, all right, Meryl, go get a job already. You know, like mm -hmm. this isn't working. And, you know, the corporate is, you know, where you can, you know, um, rely on something, but in reality, you can't, you know, in reality, Absolutely. You can't. and that was not going to light me up at all not going to light me up. I just knew that life coaching was going to light me up awesome. and, and, you know, and does light me up. So yeah. you have just, just any, and anything that you can possibly do to, you know, keep you aligned to your goal and stay in that drive and the momentum. That's it. With, with, with ease and flow, not forcing the momentum or controlling the, the momentum. I love that. So what made you decide to tell your story now? Like why now? In the book. Um, um, I I guess because I'm on the other side. I mean, of the of the biggest part of the struggles, I'm on the other side of that. I love that. And I think while you're really in the figuring out and still struggle stage, which means to you who are listening that it's I was still on my own healing journey. I had a lot of inner work that I still needed to do. And, um, and I wasn't going to write my story in that muck and messiness, you know, not that I didn't share some of that in my marketing or, you know, with people and, you know, it's not like I really kept it hidden, but, um, it just wasn't the right timing, you know, to share that, then, yeah. you know, like I, I just wanted to be in an inspiring place. Yeah. You know? I think for, for me, I didn't even consider it. And then this opportunity came at exactly the right, right. time, right? So that divine yeah. timing for all of us, right? right. So, yeah. so, and then I was, and then when I wrote the chapter, I was like, wow, I didn't think all that was coming out, right? And it just, and it flowed very easily. Yeah. But I didn't know really that story was all in me. Like, even though I share my story a lot of times when people mm -hmm. ask, like, why did you start all of this? But but now I also feel like that was a big lever, lever for me to be on the other side, right? And now I'm really up leveling because I had to 
tell my story to get past all of my inner work that I needed to do. Mm. I think that was more it. So um, you've read some of the other chapters in the book. I have. And what is your overall thought? And for people that are thinking of getting this book or haven't gotten book or haven't read all the chapters yet, um, <laughs> what are some of the things you found out about the book? Um, how important do you think this book and this collaboration of work is for someone just starting out or maybe have had a business for a while or is in a business, but it's not so aligned, you mm -hmm. know, just to use as a resource guide? I think it's very important, really. Um, because it was inspiring to me. I mean, I'm, I feel we all still need inspiration. Absolutely. You know, so um, there were a, a lot of the chapters that um, I took, you know, little nuggets out of. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, I was almost awestruck as I was going through it for the first time. Um, I did not, just for our, our listeners, I did not read anybody's chapters. I knew everyone's title, but I didn't right. read anyone's chapter until all the finals were done. And then I read the entire book um, really for edits, but to also know what everyone wrote before I did these interviews. Right. Um, I, I was awe inspired, to be honest with you. I was like, holy crap. Like, <laughs> this is some really good stuff here. Yeah. Um, and was so, so inspired by other people's stories and mm -hmm. seeing that there was kind of a, um, a common thread that we all had too. Oh, yeah. And, as we went through our journeys, mm -hmm. we all came from different spots and we all do different things, mm -hmm. but we all had this common thread as we found our way. Yeah. That to me was very inspiring. Yeah. I mean, and I think it's drive. Yeah. You know, we all have the drive and the calling, you know, to do this. True. And just, we just did whatever we could to stay aligned and keep moving forward. Yeah, yeah. But I think a lot of it's inner work too. Yeah. Right, when you do the inner work, it shows in the outer, right? Absolutely. Yeah, all right, Meryl. I want to thank you for being a part of our interview today. Um, and I'm so excited that you wrote your chapter and shared your story and are a co-author in this amazing book. <laughs> so thank you for your time today. Thank you. It was my pleasure. I want to remind everyone that you can find this book called The Ultimate Guide to Creating Your Soul Aligned Business, 25 Practical Strategies from the Expert on Amazon. You can buy the ebook or you can buy the paperback. I do recommend the paperback because it's more of a workbook and a resource guide. You are going to want to write notes. You are going to want to skip around and read the different chapters. Um, as you need them in your life and as you build your business. So go, go find that on Amazon. I also want to thank you guys for joining us today. For more information about the Soul Professional Movement, you can go to soulprofessional.com. This podcast is sponsored by the Natural Life Business Partnership, a global professional organization and business incubator for the soul-aligned professional. If you live in a higher vibration, have an alternative approach to business and are here to help repair the world. Join us at our next meet and greet. You can find the date that fits for your area and time zone at soulprofessional.com. And thank you. Thank you guys for being here today and being a part of our podcast. Thanks again, Meryl. Thank you. You're welcome.